And today we are going to be decorating this cake which is going to be for a hundredth birthday for one of my clients. And my only instructions from the client were to keep the cake purple and white or lavender and white or lavender and purple, any of those combinations. So we're going to do a simple pattern and I'm going to show you how to do that with um, some of these materials that I have. I just made up a batch of purple fondant icing, which I will keep until we're ready for it. I'm going to keep it in this Ziploc bag so it doesn't dry out. And I've got some white fondant icing. I've got some my uh, cornstarch in my little stocking, which is a great little tool to have. All you do is take an old stocking, like a knee-high stocking, put some cornstarch in it, and make a little knot at the top, and it's perfect dusting surface for you, which is wonderful. Then I've got my shortening, which is simply Crisco vegetable shortening. And I have some tools that we're going to use. I have a medium-sized, a circle cutter and a little bit of a smaller size circle cutter that we're going to be using. And then I have um, my rolling pin, obviously, to roll out my dough. And I have my knife so that I can help cut. I have my offset spatula, which I particularly like an offset spatula. It helps me pick things up. I'm used to the angle of it. You don't have to use that, whatever you want. I have a little bit of water to adhere the circles onto the cake. And I have these wonderful shaping tools in case we need them. They are rubber tip and they come in all different kinds of shapes. And instead of using your fingers or your fingernails, it's a really nice um, way to be able to help shape things and, and smooth things out when you're putting objects on the cake. First, I'm going to start with, um, I need to make a light purple. So what I'm going to do is take some of my purple, not too much because this is already really dark and I just mixed it up so it's a little bit on the sticky side, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to take my white. I put a little bit of the shortening onto my hands and just rub it in so that my hands um, are a little bit smoother and they don't stick too much to the fondant. And then I'm just going to knead the fondant a little bit to get it a little smooth, a little bit more pliable. And then what I do is I take little bits of the darker fondant and add it into the white fondant. And again, as you're kneading, if you find that it gets a little bit sticky, you can either feel free to use a little bit of the cornstarch. And if you still find that it's sticky, you can use a little bit of the shortening. It's really dependent upon you, what you like and the feel of your fondant. You don't want the fondant too sticky and you don't want it too pliable because then it, it, it's too mushy and it won't be able to stay firm. Okay, so now we are finished with our lavender uh, dough and I'm going to be preparing the surface so that we can roll out a nice piece to be able to cut out our circles and I guess you want to roll this out probably like an eighth of an inch thickness not too thick but you don't really need it too thin as well and again if you notice it's getting sticky put a little cornstarch on this and flip it over and cornstarch the back and then you can continue rolling. Okay, that looks about right. Now remember, you're going to have scraps that you're going to mush back together and be able to reuse. So this should be, this should be fine. And we're going to cut out nice circles. You just want to make sure that when you cut out these circles that they're, they're nice and clean and they don't have any jagged edges around it. So when you cut out the circles, put your cutter into the dough and just kind of move it around a little bit to make sure that there's no 
you know, there's no pieces on the side and you can also rub your fingers around it too, just to make sure there's no pieces. And then what I do is I put them in underneath this plastic little piece so that they don't dry out and they're ready for you to go. And so right now I'm just going to finish cutting out the circles on this whole piece of dough. And when we come back, we will put them onto the cake. I'll show you how we do that. So basically we just finished cutting out all of the circles and now I'm going to be mushing up the rest of the icing so that we can save it for later in case we need more circles. But remember to put it back in your plastic so that it doesn't get hard. And then what we're going to do is bring our cake over and we are going to methodically take our paintbrush with our little bit of water and place the circles one by one onto the cake. So you just want to take a little bit of water, brush it onto the cake, brush it onto the back of the circle, excuse me, not too much, and carefully place it onto the cake. Just like that. And then we're going to be putting another one right next to it. And then we're going to be placing it, I'll just do enough so you can see the pattern. Underneath. Now these circles are not going to fit perfectly all the way to the bottom and I did, the, did that like that on purpose because we're going to be doing something on the bottom which I will show you to fill up the rest of that space. Oops, here we go. You can make the circles touching either side. And when you put the circles on, try and make sure you're putting them on with the top side facing up. You'll be able to feel the difference. There we go. I'm just going to continue putting the circles all the way around to the other side of the cake and that way you can see how the whole thing looks together and then we'll be ready to do our next step. So we finished putting the large circles onto the cake and they look as even as we could get it. And I did start using my cake stand because it allows the, the cake to be risen a little bit, give it a little some height, a little bit of height so that it's easier when you're working on it to you don't get a bad back. <laughs> okay, now we're ready for the next step and we are going to be using the dark purple to create the same size circles but with rings. We're going to actually hollow out the circles. And this fondant is a little bit on the soft side because I just actually mixed it up. And to get the dark purple, it uses a lot of pigment. So sometimes it gets a little bit on the soft side, but that's okay. Nothing that we can't work with. So again, we're going to use our cornstarch and prepare our surface. And we may need to use little bit more cornstarch corn than we did when we were working with the lighter purple simply because this fondant is a little bit on the sticky side. And we roll out our dough again again to about eighth of an inch thick. Okay that's good. Make sure we're not sticking. Okay, now we're going to go back to using our, there's no air bubbles in it, so that's even better. We're going to go back to your, using our same uh, cutter, circle cutter, that we used before for the dark purple, but we're going to 
for the light purple. And we're going to cut out a circle. And then we're going to carefully take the smaller cutter and line it up as best as we can and cut again so that we have a ring. And I'll just show you what this looks like. And again, our, our icing is a little bit soft, but that's okay. Oops. Here we go. And we have our ring. So I'm going to continue to do that until we have enough rings to fill the cake. Line it up. There we go. Now, if you notice, I'm not putting them underneath the plastic because this time I do want the rings to get a little bit harder so that we can pick them up and handle them and place them on the cake. So I do want them to get a little bit dry. And when we come back, I will show you what we're going to do once all of the rings are made.